Hi, I'm Natalie, staff archaeologist and the Ed Shed manager. And today, uh, this video is going to be all about the new space that we've opened up for the summertime at Jamestown called the Ed Shed. So the Ed Shed is a place that's designed for families, right, but people of all ages to come and interact with the archaeological materials here in a way that they can't really do at the site or the museum. So when I was hired in 2020, the Ed Shed was closed. And I was hired with the understanding that after about a year or so working exclusively with the archaeological team, I would also once the Ed Shed was ready to reopen, develop and manage the programs and activities that went on there. So uh, earlier this year, we started the programming and developing phase uh, for all the new activities that would be inside of the Ed Shed to open up for this summer. And my colleagues and I, when we were thinking about these activities, we wanted to make them tactile because there aren't a lot of places on the island besides the Ed Shed where you can actually physically interact with the objects. You can absolutely talk to all of us archaeologists when we're digging out at the site and you can go in and look at our incredible museum exhibits, but those are either behind glass, right, or they're being pulled out of the dirt, but they're still active archaeological materials that haven't been cataloged yet, and so uh, can be difficult to actually let people touch and interact with sometimes. So I was a tactile learner as a kid, I still am today, so when I was thinking about how to make all of these new activities, I was largely thinking about what would a younger Natalie enjoy? Uh, and we actually took it a step further than just being tactile, right? Uh, we have a wealth of cataloged archaeological materials, right? All of our artifacts in our laboratory facilities that we have at our disposal. This is, again, the real site of James Fort. And that is the whole ethos of Historic Jamestown and the Jamestown Rediscovery Project, of which I am a part of. This is the real site. We do the real artifacts. And uh, the information that you get is from the archaeologists themselves. So these tactile um, interactive activities that we have are with real artifacts from Jamestown, right? From the excavations at James Fort. And that was really important to me. I think it's really, really cool that this stuff can be used to teach in a way that we haven't really explored before. So in the process of setting up the Ed Shed, I also interviewed and hired three wonderful interns who are going to walk you through the activities that they run on a daily basis here at the Ed Shed. I'm Aisha. I'm a rising senior at Randolph College and I'm going to explain our picking activity here in the Ed Shed. So these soil samples that we're working in are from the John Smith well that was filled in in 1610 and this was due to the starving time here on the island. And these soil samples were excavated in 2009 and our visitors are actually able to do hands-on archaeology work here and this is extremely helpful to our lab group because since the soil was excavated in 2009 we haven't really had the staff to be able to go through the vast amount of picking material that we have here and how we obtain these soil samples is we go through a process called water screening so what our archaeologists do is all of that soil that they excavate at the site they save it and they put it into large screens and you use, once you have that soil, you put it into the screen and you use a hose and you use water and you rinse off all that material and you press it through the screen and you're left with those big artifacts. And then once we pull out all of those large artifacts, then we move on to a smaller screen, very similar to a window screen. And you do that process again, you repeat it. And this is how we get those small um, containers of picking material. And since this, was, since this was a well that was filled in during, this, during 1610, a lot of what we're going to find in here is trash. So we'll find bits of oyster shells, we'll find pieces of charcoal, pieces of brick, small animal bones, and fish scales. Having this hands-on experience here at the Ed Shed is invaluable. We have so many little kids that come in here, and even adults too, they come in, they see this picking material and they're a little bit skeptical at first because it can be somewhat daunting to look at this dish full of items, not know what anything is. But once you give that little boost of encouragement and show them the seashells, then they start digging for the more rare finds like our beads, our pieces of tobacco pipes, 
um, some ceramics, like we found pieces of Delft pottery in, this, um, in these samples, pieces of glass. And they just get so excited to find that rare stuff because it's just something that you don't get to do in your everyday life. So seeing the excitement on our visitors' faces when they're allowed to go through this picking material and help us and do work that archaeologists do, it's really great that we have this opportunity here at the Ed Shed. My name is Cecilia and I am a rising junior at the College of William and Mary and I will be explaining our GIS activity here at the Ed Shed. So we start out with a map of the Jamestown Fort from above. So you can see if you recognize some of the Palisade area um, and this mapping is used by our archaeologists to get a wider view of what they've found here at Jamestown. So they're finding things and mapping things like historic buildings. So all of these areas are places where buildings have been found. Um, they're tracing things like post holes to be able to figure out the outline of all of these structures. They're also mapping all sorts of other features. Uh, that includes a lot of burials. Um, those are really concentrated around the church, but they're found throughout the fort. Uh, and it really gives a good idea of just how much our archaeologists have found here at Jamestown. So you can see some of the lines of the palisade, uh, as well as, again, all those burials and other features. At the Ed Shed, it's great to be able to give a perspective about how this mapping is used and give people an opportunity to use GIS, sometimes for the first time. So uh, we have a horse burial from the Revolutionary War that we have uh, people who come to visit trace. So there's a horse, a lot, as I said, our archeologists are tracing a lot of the features they're finding. So they get the chance to try that out. Um, this is an example that somebody has done. Uh, she has traced the outline of this horse. Um, and once she's done, gets the horse to take home with her. Um, and it just provides an example of the tracing of the features and what mapping could look like in archeology. span Hi, I'm Taylor. Um, I am an intern here at the Ed Shed and I'm a rising junior at William & Mary. Um, so this is the artifact activity here at the Ed Shed. Here we have a variety of artifacts that were found at various places here at Jamestown by our archeologists that our visitors can come and actually interact with and touch. Um, we asked our visitors a variety of questions and we do a variety of activities such as asking, do any of these look familiar? You might see um, some versions of it in kind of your everyday life or just things that you are familiar with. Um, for example, a lot of people come in and they see this artifact here and they say, oh, it's an arrowhead, um, which is very close. It's actually a projectile point. Um, so this is a really good example of something that we see a lot but might mistake it for something else. Um, a projectile point is an umbrella term for things like arrowheads and spear points. Um, but this projectile point is probably too heavy to be on the end of an arrow. The arrow would go right in the ground. Um, so instead, this was probably on the end of a spear as a projectile point instead. And then we also have another activity where our visitors can come in and sort these materials into a variety of material types, such as we have pottery, metal, bone. Um, we also have pipes and glass. Uh, so they can sort these artifacts here into those material types. For example, for some material types that our guests can look at, um, these are two types of glass from different time periods. Um, this really big one here is the base of a wine bottle. Um, it was probably an onion shape and it's 17th century. And this one is a more modern glass. Um, when our guests get to hold these two pieces of glass, they really feel the difference of how glass is made throughout time. Uh, for example, this one is free blown by a glass blower and it's a lot thicker, it's heavier, and it's also more opaque. You can't really see through it. Also on the bottom here, we see kind of evidence of devitrification, which is a chemical process. And right here as well is a chemical process that, um, our, that glass goes through. Um, this glass bottle, um, case bottle here uh, really goes through this devitrification process. Um, also, so this modern glass, we'll see, you can really see through it. Um, it's even throughout and it's a lot lighter. We also see a difference between different types of glazes in pottery, um, which you can really tell through touching them. It's not really something that you will understand um, just by seeing them. By touching them, it really helps um, this kind of difference be understood. Um, this is some Delft here. Um, it's a tin glaze. The glaze itself is very thick, and you can feel 
where the glaze comes on and how there's a real big difference between the pottery itself and the glaze. Um, this is just a lead glaze and you can't really feel the difference between the lead glaze and the pottery itself. Okay, this is a Bartman jug. Um, it is from Germany, a place called Frecken. Um, it was used to hold beer. And as you can see kind of on the side here, this is um, the, the jug is separate and then the sprig mold of the mask here is placed on separately. And by touching it, you can see the difference between the jug and the mold. Um, so that's another example, and this is the medallion part. And you can really tell the difference um, by touching it. This artifact activity that we have here um, gives our visitors an opportunity that they don't have at the archaeology sites that we have here and the museum. It allows them to touch the artifacts and kind of works as a please touch museum here at Jamestown. Um, a lot of visitors here learn um, from uh, the tactile learning. Um, and this gives them the opportunity to really feel the differences in different types of artifacts and get that hands-on experience that they can't really get at other places here. The Ed Shed is open Tuesday through Saturday from May 31st to August 6th, 2022. It's open 9 to 4.30 p.m. And it'll also be the headquarters for our kids' camp, which you can find out more about on our website. Reopening the Ed Shed was a significant project for everybody here at Jamestown. And we undertook this not just so that we could have a space designed for people to interact with artifacts, but as a space that potentially is the first training site for any future archaeologist. So thank you all for watching, and I hope you get to visit.